because what we do right here is try to go through the events that's happening around the world and we dissect everything word for word and we break it down the way you want it to be broken down and we have experts and you also be able to hear from the horse's mouth this is roughly speaking i'm your host abir of sanjan so this week to start with the un has announced that they're going to investigate uganda for potential human rights violations for invading the congo or drc if you remember just a few weeks back uganda was attacked by double suicide bombing and from that point the president of uganda promised to attack and go after the people who tormented Uganda and did all the nasty things to the country and the people who died. So, after that, there's been a war raging. We've seen pictures, we've seen news. Uh, the Ugandan army in Congo deep in the forest doing what they have to do. But are there also reports of human rights violations and there are also reports of mineral plundering and stuff like that. Anyway, my comment is no comment. Also, on, in the other news, when, if we move away a little bit from Uganda and we go into the world of sports, Lewis Hamilton's fans, I want you to move with me slowly on this one. Lewis Hamilton fans are jeering towards 50,000 signatures to try and overturn the results in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. This is what happened. It, it's been about a week. So the F1 season was coming to an end. Lewis Hamilton, who is a Briton, a Briton, and uh, Max Verstappen, who is a Dutch, were head to head in the championship. They were all tied up and it was a winner takes all for the final race. Now, the race starts and Lewis Hamilton overtakes Max Verstappen on the first lap, the very first lap. So he leads for most of the race and everything is going smoothly. So he's about 11 points. I mean, if you don't know the F1, how it works, if someone is really ahead of you by just a second, it's very difficult to overtake that person. So Lewis is about 11 seconds ahead of Max. Five laps to go. Another driver at the back crashes. And now the safety car comes. The safety car comes when there's debris, when their car's broken, when there's an incident on the truck, so that they can clear that, they clear the danger. So the, the driving is then safe. During that time, everyone is bunched up from the back to the front. So Lewis Hamilton is at the front, but he has about five cars between him and the person they are fighting for the title with, who is Max Verstappen. Now, the race director, Michael Massey, decides that with one lap to go, he is going to remove all the cars in between Lewis and Max. They unlap themselves, they go, so Lewis can race with Max Verstappen. And Max Verstappen had stopped for fresher tires. Lewis had done more than 39 laps on his tires. So he was a sitting duck. And what happened, of course, in that one lap, in just seconds, Max passed Lewis Hamilton and he won the championship. And now all the British people are not happy, and I guess all the Lewis Hamilton fans around the world. So they are raising awareness and they think this petition might you know, help them overturn the result. I mean, it's a long shot. I think it's really a pipe dream, but well, who is to fault them for that? Um, in the other story, in Uganda, again, we had the Janzi Awards take place last week. And that's the main topic for the week. That's why we are here mainly. I have what I call tastemakers in Uganda, California, and Canada on the show with me. Moses Serogo in Uganda, Bettina Tumahais in Canada, and Abbeka Mulumba in California. And what we're going to do is talk about the Jans Awards. What a mess, what happened, what went wrong, and all that kind of stuff. Give me a minute, I'll be back in a minute. You are watching AI TV. 
AI TV, connecting the diaspora. Welcome back to Roughly Speaking. I'm still your host, Abi Raf Sanjan. Allow me to introduce the three people I'm on this show with. Moses Serugo, live from Kampala. Hello. And Bettina Tumahaisi, live from Toronto. Hello. Abeka Mulumba in California. Must be very warm over there. Not too warm as such. Hello, mm. our viewers. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. So, um, we are going to talk about the Janza Awards that happened last week. And, of course tracking back the awards events history in Uganda. Uh, you've been around enough to see and witness some of the best awards and uh, also be a part of the organization, the reporting, the the voting. Because I remember there was a time when the journalists also had a vote uh, and then the public and then uh, I think the academy or you would say the panel. And that's the Palm Awards and then we had the Golden Awards, we had um, the Golden Pen Awards. I think that was um, Sagi Sagara's idea. I don't know if you still remember that, Moses Serugo. <laughs> we also, Barely. Yeah. <laughs> we also had some awards, I don't remember the exact name, by uh, Desri Balow. I think those oh, yeah. happened once the or podcast. twice only and they died out. Um, so looking at the history of the Ugandan Awards, let me come to you, Moses Serugo. Mm -hmm. What is your experience with Ugandan awards in general? Um, uh, I, I think for the most part, uh, the Ugandan awards really mean well, um, uh, so to speak. Um, uh, in, in terms of form, yes, um, uh, you know, they mean well. The intention is uh, pretty much uh, clear. But the execution is usually the problem, you know, because why are you doing these awards? Are you doing them to um, reward excellence? Are you doing the awards to reward excellence? And then if you're rewarding excellence, what are the parameters you're going to use to reward um, excellence? <clears throat> Let me use the example of uh, the awards that uh, we know the global ones, you know, that have been around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Look at the Grammys. The Grammys are a peer driven um, uh, award, so to speak. It is fellow musicians um, uh, recognizing each other, you know. Then you have the American Music Awards that I think are more of a popularity um, uh, contest, you know, where the public pretty much chooses who is going to be the award recipient. So then when you come to Uganda, what exactly do you want the award to be? Do you want it to be a Grammy sort of peer experience or do you want it to be a fun experience or are you going to do a hybrid you know, um, uh, experience? But then if you're going to do awards, can they be authentic at least? Because my issue with the Janzi Awards was mainly the authenticity. I remember with the Palm Awards, you had an auditing firm you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, authenticating uh, the awards. When it came to the uh, to the Janzi Awards, one of the statements that actually took me aback was that they have a secret academy that they will only reveal after three years, you know? So this was more about pester power, um, so to speak. On the line, um, the authenticity, you know, gets mired up. Um, uh, you have issues with uh, people, you know, not giving sponsors accountability and then sponsors pull out. So um, uh, broadly, I, I, I think it's, it's um, <clears throat> I guess it's just a representation of the national problems we have, um, so to speak. So you'll always have uh, tongues wagging and that sort of thing. But for the broader part, I think the awards mean well, and it's good to recognize people. It's good to acknowledge that uh, someone has, um, you know, has succeeded or has brought a certain, uh, you know, value to a certain industry, but it needs to be done right. Good. Um, so Bettina, I saw your post on social media. Uh, I think quoting um, Spice Diana, I think she's one of the people who are um, 
one of those who have been like really enraged by the awards. What, what were you trying to support here? What is your problem with Janzi? Um, my actually, <laughs> thank you so much. Hmm. First of all, I will say I was honored at one time when I was working in radio to have been part of the uh, Palm Awards. I was among the judges. And uh, to me, integrity is key. Like Moses mentioned, uh, Palm Awards had the way of, of, of getting some other people to, to weigh in. And that's why artists, they, would, they used to find out who was on the judging panel and they would go behind to try and bribe you to make them winners or to give the, to, for you to give them your vote. Remember, you had one vote. Yeah. So they would look for those judges to get the judges' vote and they would come and talk to you. Definitely would say no. It had money on top of it. So, but they did not try to influence the public. The public had uh, had the highest uh, authority in voting to mm -hmm. me. That's in my own opinion. When you look at the Janzi Awards, um, first of all, my issue with Janzi Awards was that arts have been closed or under lockdown for two years. They haven't mm -hmm. been performing at all. The media came and said, oh, open open the arts. They did not. The people came online and everyone was crying, let's please open us. We need to make money. They were not making money. A few of the artists, as you know, went to Guru. They got money, which they fought for, and they did not share with the rest of the people. Meaning, if you're able to receive money and and take it, you're, you're compromised already. The person who gives you money will have a higher hand in telling you, in dictating how to how to support them or what to do. If I say tomorrow, I gave you my money, but when I organize something like this, I, you must be behind it. You have no choice because you already know you ain't what you are. So that is one. I had an, an, an issue with, the, with that because most people that were behind the Janzi Awards had gone to Gulu, had received money. The arts were closed. There was nothing to be appreciative about unless you're saying you were rewarding people for keeping quiet when everyone was crying. So to come to what uh, Diana is saying, uh, Spice Diana is saying, for her, to me, I try to interpret what she was trying to say, that they, the awards were rushed. I can read for you someone who is actually, who was nominated and is not an artist, but he was, he said, my votes counted for two days. The rest of the days they stopped giving feedback. And I also just stopped pushing people. The website link never worked. As a nominee, I found out voting was open two days after and through a friend. So you're nominated. Those are the words that I received this text message. I'm not faking anything. You're nominated. You're not aware that you're nominated. Someone says, hey, by the way, you're nominated two days after. Then I push people, please vote for me. Two days when I'm pushing, the votes are not counting. So how do you tell me? that you had 100 votes today, five days you have 100 votes, and Bettina is telling you, I voted, I voted, I voted, and the, the, the votes are not counting. So, so the, the voting was also flawed, but I, you hit a nerve somewhere where I want us to, I, I want to break this down. Let me try. First of all, you talked about Gulu and the money, and this is how it works, and the, and the lockdown. Um, I think... The, the industry, the art industry has been clamoring for help for the industry, for the economy to be opened so that people can perform and make money. And you can see the desperate in there. And people are looking for money. And this is how, money is the main thing here. And this is how I arrived to this. So you have the people are organizing the event. You have Salim Sare is organized and COVID is not even an issue anymore. Like it's not even observed. The SOPs are not observed. It's like someone who is, like it's always said in Uganda, above the law was behind this event. And I think Silvio, what his name was, really, really very sound at this event to the extent that they are, I don't know if the producer has that clip where people are fighting. A guy steps on stage and claims that uh, another artist, uh, I think Gerard Ichiwe, a Kadongokam musician, uh, store their money. So as this man is being roughed off the stage, is shouting Silvio or his name. So you can see who is calling the shots at this event. 
So back to the money issue. Cindy, who just got married hours ago, somehow finds herself at the event, basically skips her honeymoon, her honeymoon <laughs> to the event. And then I'm told, Palazzo told them, if I don't get my money, five million, I'm not coming to the event. So money, money is the constant um, thing here. Then I think they had money for some awards and some awards didn't come with money. But I will come to you, Mr. Baker Munumba. Do you think this was uh, a move by maybe the people in, in charge or in power to get these people in one place and control them with money like it has always been with the politics and music in Uganda? Yeah, ever since uh, Bobby Wine came out and proved to be very strong because of his popularity, uh, when he when he came into politics, he wasn't someone to be introduced to the people. So he was using his music popularity, and that was the best threat that Ugandan government has ever gotten. So now they sat down to see how they can melt down that power. That's how they came up with them trying to disorganize the music industry in Uganda. And they were very vulnerable because they were very poor by then. They, they had no shows, they had nothing. So now he's using them. What Sare is doing is to kill the music industry. And so far he has succeeded. Uh, anything that has Livia Wall, um, Salim Saleh and Raga D, it can't move. It can't move. Uh, Raga D has well, been there it, for- Well, it moved, it may, it may have been, it, but it moved, maybe it's, you it, know? Did, it didn't move. Uh, it didn't move. Uh, moving, pushing you um, into the sea. That's not moving. If you mm -hmm. want to go on 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 somewhere where it's safe and someone is pushing you towards the sea, you're not moving because that's not the direction you want to move. And okay. that's the the case now. The the Janzi as it is, is a government thing. They didn't hope. They didn't help things like Palm Awards. There have been so many high people awards. They, there have been awards, but government didn't help them. They instead came up with theirs. And theirs is not moving anywhere because it's, it's not aimed at promoting um, talent. It's not aimed at promote. It's just awarding their own. So if you're not for them, you can't get an award. So uh, the situation is, is, is very tense and the situation is too bad for the Ugandan entertainment industry because it's now being politicized completely. Mm. You don't support the regime, you're not going to get anywhere. For example, when they suffocated uh, Bobby Wayne's shows, everyone was quiet. And when it's time for fighting for money, then they all come together. So the situation is bad and if we don't help we are going to be doomed completely and we we might not see entertainment in uganda anymore moses you're the man on the ground you are the one in uganda abeka is speaking from california not to not to say that he has not you know had first-hand information but have you had any rumors maybe on the streets who exactly is behind the Janzi Awards. Because we heard of some development group and then I think Minister of Tourism is involved and then we have had the, uh, w the, that wealth creation group. And I think also, um, I mean, so many people involved. It's definitely not Jan's band, right? <laughs> um, uh, you, you know something I can't say with certainty, um, uh, who is... Uh, really involved but what i know is uh um uh, operation wealth creation um could be having a big hand in, in it and uh because you see the way operation wealth creation uh, um operates if i could say that is precisely that they've uh, been involved in uh you know alleviating the livelihoods of uh, other sectors so to speak so um uh, when this lobby 
came up because I just uh, one, one thing I remember one time when uh, I, I think uh, the former Prime Minister Ruhakana Rugunda was uh, launching um, uh, the the first daughters uh, film company. Mm. I forget uh, what it's called. I think it was Isaiah something. Um, pardon me. Um, uh, he said, um, if the arts are to thrive in Uganda, they have to form a lobby. You know, because government's resources are limited. So the way you can, the only way you can get government resources is by lobbying. So a group of people yes come up and uh, they're like, what? Let's do this. Let's uh, lobby. I don't agree with the whole lobbying um, of having to go to Gulu, so to speak. But broadly speaking, I think it was well intentioned that they wanted to lobby Operation Wealth Creation to cater for the arts. But remember that you're operating uh, in, in a narrative where the leadership also believes that arts are useless and they are elevating sciences in as much as we're not paying our doctors, you know, right. Mm. So I can't say with certainty who's behind it, but I know there's an Operation Wealth uh, Creation hand. And of course, when you talk Operation Wealth Creation, you have Salim Saleh in there, because at the awards, they kept telling us about this, uh, you know, guest listener, guest listener. He wasn't there, at least on the second day when I was at uh, the awards. And uh, Silvio Wari, of course, is, uh, you know, one of the people in the leadership of uh, Operation Wealth Creation. So it's just as well that she she came off as the face of uh, of the Janzi Awards. My problem, though, is with the fat cuts, you know, in the mm. arts industry or arts and entertainment industry. There are these people who I would probably say are schemers, people who are like sharks. When they smell blood, you know, they 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 they, 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 uh, they, they go for it. And I think that's what most people have a problem with, the so-called fat cuts. Because at least what I would want is something like the Auditor General's uh, report on the execution of the Janzi Awards. For starters, the general consensus in the industry is that they were hastily put together. You know, you launch awards in November, yeah. you're doing your nominations in, I think, a matter of a week or two, then the voting is going on. The voting itself has problems because remember, you're in a country where Facebook is still shut down, internet rates are so high, and you're telling people to log in online in order to vote. So there were all these things about the Janzi Awards, but you pro probably could call them growing pains and all that. And then why the Janzi anyway? You know, because yes, we know there's a band called Janzi. There's an instrument that uh, someone appropriated, you know, because the Janzi is essentially an appropriation of our Dungu. And there's, there's no problem in that, so to speak. Um, uh, I think Albert Sempeke Jr. went and, uh, you know, to South Africa and they remodeled the xylophone. You know, so I have no problem with, uh, you, you know, the uh, appropriating the Adungo into the Janzi. We've had uh, the Kora Awards. But you're telling me this instrument is $1,000, cost $1,000 for each instrument. They handed out 100 of those. What do the artists need now? Because one of the highlights of, that, of, of, of day two of the Janzi Awards was that song, I think, by Gerard Kiwewa, where they came on and they were dressed, by the way, in, in the Ugandan flag. Mm. And they were like, Tukoyo Kuzungire Guru. You know, and those are the sentiments Spice Diana was raising. Just open up the economy and then we make money. Because imagine what a thousand dollars can do for an artist that has been under lockdown for 21 months. And they are probably not like a teacher who has the alternative of maybe going to make bricks or make pavers or make coffins, that sort of thing. The artist wants to create, you know. So just open up the economy and let the artist create, so to speak. So if it was a lobby, you're going to Gulu and all that, I think the bigger thing for the arts world would have been open up the economy. I don't really know who the Janzi Awards were rewarding. Yes, there are some people who we probably didn't know, and you know they're probably going to ride on the back of the award, um, including Charles Peter Maiga. You know, you have your, your, your nominated, and then your prob probably your book is going to fly off the shelves. That's what awards do. But broadly, what was being rewarded with these awards happening in the time of a pandemic and ha a had a 21 month hard lockdown on the arts? Just open up the economy. And yes, next year we are turning 60. Reward artists then in October 2022 and make it like a celebration, so to speak, that is worthy of everyone's time and creativity.
And honestly, for me, I think um, I would say many of those people who won, maybe not many, but some of them, I mean, were deserving in their categories. I mean, I, I, I have people who I know that won awards for what they were doing, and they deserve. The problem is when you come in in uh, the same group that is not probably deserving, and, and it so, takes me to the award of, um, I think, best film. The Girl mm -hmm. in the Jumper, right? Is that the, the title? The Girl in the Yellow Jumper. The Girl in the Yellow Jumper. Right. The movie is not even out yet. Where did these mm -hmm. people watch the movie to be able to award it? Just because it clinched a, a Netflix spot. Like, are you kidding me? It's it's like me awarding George Collins' movie with... Uh, uh, George Collins' movie with uh, with, with uh, Ben Affleck, which is in production right now, and then the Oscars come and say they want it. Like everyone, we didn't watch it. <laughs> okay, so I think but, those. That's, that's the point. That's the point I was trying to make about authenticity, because even with the Oscars, because the thing about the Oscars is the film, yeah. the, the film producers or the filmmakers do campaigns to get the Oscar voters to watch their films. You get, eh? mm. I know of a film that had a campaign, I think of about a million dollars just to get these voters to watch, you know, the films. Cause usually the Oscar films are art house films. They're not usually the most popular films, but I think the, the uh, re in rewarding the girl, <laughs> the girl in a yellow jumper, yellow I jumper. think it was just about the hype that it's going to be a Netflix. It's going to be Uganda's first film on Netflix. Yeah. And it's premiering on Boxing Day, uh, so to speak. But that's the point I was trying to make oh, about that, authenticity. Is, you know, is that similar? Moses, is Moses, that, uh, go ahead, Moses. Uh, Becker. Um, it's not about awarding um, something because it's coming to, to the Netflix. Mm. As government, what have they done to see that there are more movies on Netflix? That's what they should have done. Because Janzi, like you said, you you, you can't um, be certain. It's 100% it's owned by the government. Because if mm. Slivia came out and said, thank you for entrusting me to, to host this as who as the operation uh, operation what, what, whatever she does mm. so it's basically the government that came up to, to see how they can control musicians and that's their primary goal it's not about awarding the best is how do we control these musicians Abubeka, i want you that's to I, I want you to to take me through the the process of this government uh, I think clearly the president of the country, Yoweri Kagutam Seven, has been blunt about the us in Uganda. He at one time said it is useless. They should invest all the money in sciences, pay more the science teachers, and the art teachers can go hungry. And then if you see a project, a big, big project, which I understand was created really to to help agriculture, but such a big project, which is also, I think, connected directly to the office of the president, uh, because it's the office of the president, then Operation Wealth Creation, and now the Janzi Awards, which means the source is really the office of the president. And the president, I think, was uh, expected to be the guest of honor. Is this a turnaround that the very president who doesn't support arts now wants to promote arts? How do you understand, or how do you make sense of this? No, um, there was there was a budget. There was money. There was money on the budget, and that money had to be used, whatever the case. <laughs> That's why they rushed to do uh, the awards in, a, a, in less than two months. Nomination in one week, voting in one week, and the the, the ceremony because they had money that they had to use, and uh, I don't want to use the right word. They had to eat. But how they, they wanted to eat it was the the problem now. So that's why they rushed. They could have skipped these years of pandemic and not organized the awards. No one would have asked them why did you organize the awards because the entertainment industry was shut down completely. Like they violated all the the SOPs. SOPs. And the Jans weren't were there anyway, that. so nobody would ask, right? Yeah, because who would you ask? Uh, you ask Saleh why you, you you violated the thing? 
So I want to so. Go ahead. So basically, it's, it's, it's nothing that, me, me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll stick to my, my point. It's nothing like helping musician in here. It's just making musicians sit in one small room and suffocate and, and them. And control them. But, but uh, I wanted to come to you with a different question. But what is yes. that that you want to say? I want to, let me first say this. When you go to the Wealth Creation website, one of the, they say our main two mandates are distribute farm inputs to farmers. Mm. Now I'm mm. going to speak like a farmer. Farmers like you. <laughs> farmers like me. <laughs> One, if you say to distribute farm inputs to farmers, if these awards were organized to appreciate the farmers because the farming sector never stopped working, even during yeah. COVID, it never stopped working. Every day you wake up, you eat, you have breakfast. That means yeah. farmer A, went to the farm, uh, planted the, the, the seedlings, you know, the seeds and whatever you're doing and made sure that you get the food that you're eating. The farming sector never stops during COVID. It never stopped. If they had organized these awards to reward farmers, we would be appreciative and we wouldn't even be here discussing In this. fact, you would be holding a, a, an award right now. Yes, because right now, the wealth creation is meant for farmers. Okay, we'll be like, okay, finally, the farmers are being are, are being appreciated. We know it is our thing. But how can you get, you say, you distribute farm inputs to the farmers. You come and say commercial agriculture mobilizing masses to engage in commercial agriculture to, book, to boost household income. And you're at the show giving people a dungu because they sang a song Really, aren't you misappropriating? Uh, uh, misappropriating. Misappropri you misappropri use the funds. Yes. Yeah. Why wouldn't you go and reward the farmers? That look at that thing. It even needs a forklift to lift from Kololo to wherever it is. <laughs> Everything was wrong. Well, they the pre the president is on record telling people who have failed to survive, in, including teachers. At one time, I think. Uh, 2005 or four, where he told the teachers to go So exactly. <laughs> now if that you can't sing, maybe he's people. telling you you belong to to this farming group. Yes. So why can't he support that farming group? The, if he thinks that everyone, every loser comes to farming, farming is commercial. Then why did they set up this organization to boost our our income, to to uplift us, to allow us to to transform the rural people? Mm -hmm. The real farmers, the awards mm. fail to answer the six whys. The who, mm. who are they going to, to give the money to to award? Who they did not, they targeted the wrong people. What mm. were they rewarding them for? They were rewarding musicians. If you are giving a farmer and you give her a hoe and the seedling, and seedling, she'll be like, oh my God, this is what it is. What are you are giving them for? When? Even the timing was so, so wrong. Where? Why would you get a show and put it in? in Kororo and you assume that we are just going to watch and say, okay, we all know how hard it is to get Kororo grounds. <laughs> so like Becca said, there's no way government is not part of that. Even Sylvia Ori is assuring us as who, as the CEO, whatever her position is, because when you go to the website actually of Wealth Creation, the contact number there is a 075. Mm. Offices are not, are they not supposed to have like 041 and faxes and stuff like that? <laughs> so you call a mobile number. Is this really or, 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 an authentic organization? It's a mobile it, landline. It's a hybrid. It's a mobile landline. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. To me, I'll look at it as like this someone is going to, to hold up a number. But for me, telecom, we are online. are are <laughs> no, um, no, 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 uh, no, let me, let me come in and, uh, okay, correct certain things. Mm. Uh, okay, UNCC was a partner um, uh, for, for, for the Janzi Awards. That's Uganda National Cultural Center. Yeah. What I would have had a problem with in regards to UNCC is going to Salim Saleh to lobby for resources, you know, to alleviate the sector in this uh, pandemic. Because... UNCC, that's the National Theatre Normal Gallery, is established or was established in 1959 by an act of parliament. So ordinarily, UNCC should have been going to parliament to get money 
you know and that is i think what the musicians uh, ultimately did i don't know if parliament gave them the money but parliament was dishing out money during the pandemic and that's what uncc should have done instead of being a pilgrimage uh, to guru another thing i want to correct sops were actually observed you know because i think there were not more than 200 people in uh, in 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 that tent so to speak mm. and those are the sops we had sanitizer on the tables and well okay maybe people you did six yes, feet apart right. moses 200 uh, people 200 people if you do six feet apart how big a tent is that right. Moses, don't no, no, speak no, like no, a politician. No, I'm not speaking like a politician. I was there. At least I was on ground. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, the, the tent was really very big. As, um, every time someone went up on stage to speak uh, on the mic, there was someone actually nearby sanitizing the microphone, oh, great. so to speak. Moses, people Moses, not, Moses. Let, let me finish. Don't let me eat finish. up, Moses. Let, me let Moses finish. Let me okay, finish. Moses, finish. Let me finish. Well, Let speaking like a politician as no, I am not speaking <laughs> like a politician. I was there. Regarding Netflix, I want to comment on what Abu Bekar was saying about uh, Netflix. Actually, government should not even be investing in the film industry so that we can get Netflix validation. Government should be investing in the film industry so that Ugandans watch films in their own spaces. Do you know how expensive or how hard it is for someone to access Netflix in Uganda with our high, high internet? You know, okay. I am not Moses, forgetting. Mm. Do you agree that if these awards were targeting the farmers, we wouldn't be having this conversation? Why? Because um, the farmers uh, don't care anyway. Because <laughs> I mean, if, if you're point, going to mess up the farmers, they'll complain too. And my point on Netflix wasn't that government should. Uh, my point mm. is, mm. government should know that um, entertainment industry adds value to the country. Exactly. And, they should, and they should give them anything necessary to improve the industry. Yeah, but I think I'm better. I agree, which is why I agree with Spice Diana, because right about now, what the sector needs is not the tokenism of the Janzi Awards. Yeah. And you give it me a trophy that I may not even use. At least with the Grammys, I can use a Grammy to get a loan from a bank, or I can auction it and get money. Tony Braxton did that. What am I going to do with that Janzi that Bettina said I need a forklift? You know, even to, to stock it. A museum, you need you know? another house. A museum so, in Sweden exactly might right. just. So did what it. the sector needs, but, and I agree with Spice Diana, is that it should reopen. Moses, not I you think, giving me a token award. I think award. the takeaway, the takeaway from mm. your um, comment was. I think from the start you said you believe that mm. these awards mean good, like it's they're in good faith. It's just mm. the execution. And execution. Uh, that takes me to Abu Bekar. I mean, to be fair, I think the Palm Awards and all the other awards have had similar challenges. Don't you think people are just sour gripping? People who lose awards just don't <laughs> feel like these awards are meant for them. I mean, when you lose, maybe Ugandans are just sore losers, just bad losers. Do you think we can find an award uh, that will satisfy every Ugandan? It takes, it takes a lot to, to, to organize an award. Hmm. It takes someone uh, someone's performance, someone's... It involves a lot. But under lockdown, uh, what were the criterias? People are just hmm. releasing music. And if you if you don't have access to YouTube, that means you can't listen to someone's music. If you don't have access to TV, you can't listen. But people, the other time people used to go to shows and they could listen music there. They could see the songs from shows, different shows, and that was it. So mm -hmm. there's no way. And I, I will I will insist on that. There was no way why we needed this award this year. No way. We didn't need the award this year. Maybe next year when the, the, the industry is stable. We had the Palm Awards. Palm Awards is one of the things that improved the, the musicians' way of understanding because they became competitive. And even 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 when, it, it also had its issues. Like when one sponsor said that one shouldn't win the award, my, my friend has to win the award. You, 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 you give it to him? I ceased to be the sponsor, and, and things were twi twisted in the uh, backstage. Some, I know some people came knowing that they're already winners. So mm -hmm. everything has its, uh, its problems, but mm -hmm. what's the 
uh, what are the people benefiting is, is, the, is the most important thing. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break, a very short no, no, break. No, 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 Rafsanjan, before you go for the break. Yeah. Rafsanjan, first break. Okay, we'll take, we'll take a break in one break. minute. Moses, so, what is itching? Before you go for the break, the Janzi Awards were not actually just about music, which is why they were yeah. held over two days, because you had the so-called Silent Awards, and I didn't like that they were called the Silent Awards, but at least podcasters were rewarded, yeah. book publishers, cartoonists, and all that kind of stuff, which is why I insist they mean well. It's the execution that was a problem, and especially in terms of authenticity, because they were more about pester power. You know, if you had the means to galvanize your voting block on social media, you were the person who was going to win the awards. Did they even count? Did they even, did, did, did you, did they even Moses, count? Did you hear the message I read when we started? Or we, someone whose votes did you read the message? We're going to my vote. We are going to continue. We're going to continue with this um hot conversation when we come yeah. back from the break. Two minutes. Okay. You are watching AI TV. AI education is the key to unlocking your family's financial future. At Burlington Community Financial Center. We help families resolve their financial complexities by working with them to create clear and meaningful financial goals. Thanks to our unique educational platforms and financial workshops, families can begin to live debt-free and have enough money to secure their emergency fund and long-term savings. At Burlington Community Financial Center, our mission is to educate families and guide them to achieve their financial dreams. Contact us today to learn how to live financially independent. Education is the key. You are watching AI TV. AI TV, connecting the diaspora. Education is the key to unlocking your family's financial future. At Burlington Community Financial Center, we help families resolve their financial complexities by working with them to create clear and meaningful financial goals. Thanks to our unique educational platforms and financial workshops, families can begin to live debt-free and have enough money to secure their emergency fund and long-term savings. At Burlington Community Financial Center, our mission is to educate families and guide them to achieve their financial dreams. Contact us today to learn how to live financially independent. You are watching AI TV. These things were about music. They were not about music. They were held. Welcome back to Roughly Speaking. I'm still Raf Sanjan, your host. Um, so we're discussing the awards in Uganda. There have been issues about the Gens Awards that just took place last weekend. And uh, I think some artists are happy, others are not happy. And like I said, if you see someone skip their honeymoon, and attend an awards <laughs> event, then it means something to them. But then when you see someone also clamoring and making a lot of noise and complaining, you gotta give them attention. So I want us to go back to our panelists. We have Moses Serugo live from Kampala, and we have uh, Abbeka Mlumba in California, Bettina Tumuhaisi in Canada. So um, gentlemen and a lady, or lady and gentlemen, when we went in the break, I think if both of uh, sorry, all of you are in the in the same room, <laughs> we we would be right now using security to separate <laughs> to separate know. people. Thankfully, this is Zoom. The only thing you can do is literally throw your phone away. <laughs> oh, Moses gotcha. acted like he didn't but, hear what I read. Yeah. So Bettina Hello? is insisting on that message. And yes. Moses, it seems like, um, and I think we agree on this. If you tell people to, mm -hmm. to if you tell people not to respect the arts, but then you mm. come, you go around the people's back and support the art, or you try mm. to use the art to get where you want to get, and then you mm. tell people that the voting system is online, and then mm. you tell people that the way to go is to use the internet. We're trying to achieve Vision Twenty Forty. Mm. 
Mm. But then you have all these restrictions with the internet. First of all, even mm. when it's there, it's damn expensive. And if, mm -hmm. even when people want to pay and say, okay, we'll pay through the nose, you have all these mm. restrictions. People have to go through VPN. I don't know right mm. now, Moses, you could be talking to me from uh, Caracas or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> on, on Morocco. So... I have a Ukrainian visa via, via VPN. Via Sorry. VPN. Now you're speaking from Kiev. So I don't know how how do you make sure that all these things intertwined all together make sense and really are there to develop the country. Like they they mean what you're saying or you mean what you're saying. If you're telling Please, me to use the internet, right. give me the internet. If you're uh, supporting right. the arts, give me the platform to do the arts. I beg to speak before Moses says anything. Are you trying? Are you are you trying to hijack him? Yes. <laughs> okay, I am. go ahead. Because then I can guide him before he comes back and starts campaigning <laughs> for the future. First of all, you heard the message that someone who is nominated is not aware that they are nominated. Mm. We start voting two days after his mm. uh, his votes stop counting. They are telling us. First of all, I was really like annoyed that when they told us to vote on WhatsApp, you know, you have mm -hmm. to vote through WhatsApp and are they trying to capture all our, our contacts, you know. <laughs> then when you start voting, that the, the votes are not adding up. Mm -hmm. You told us that each jazz, we have to rent a room or With due respect, I like the jazz, but it is for one thousand dollars for crying out mm. one thousand dollars so that mm. means next year someone has to go to china to to make a smaller version of it to make sure mm. that they are they are easy to carry home you know mm. that one thousand dollars how much what do you know how much it would have saved like an artist an upcoming mm. artist that is mm. one why would you go and spend omuntu already ya jane brand ye jazzy band you, you mm. come and hijack their brand you know and mm. use it i don't know i'm not speaking like on behalf of of, of, of jazzy band but well, I'm they, speaking they as want an award who, what creating the brand is you already know jazzy is a band you're coming you want to ride on top on, on on the on the back of the of the mm. jazzy band you know we have zina awards why wouldn't they partner with Zina Awards and mm. host awards if they were not selfish? Mm. You, you again told like, you are saying that it is with the national culture and stuff like that. They are the same people who are making noise when they are closed. But when mm. the Guru thing came in, they all shut up and kept quiet, meaning they were getting something out of this uh, Janzi Guru stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, Bettina, uh, you're, you're being oblivious to the, uh, to the reality in Uganda here. And I, I think mm -hmm. uh, I'll go back to the point that Moses was trying to raise and probably didn't get there when he mm -hmm. said that, um, first of all, there's an issue of trust in Uganda when it comes to money. And mm -hmm. you can replace trust with the word corruption if you want. <laughs> so you are in a situation where you know that there's a lot of money I think Abeka mentioned and said there was money to spend and they had to find a way to spend the money. I'm not sure about that, but let's say that the situation. Let's walk around that and say mm -hmm. if there is money and Moses talked about UCC, if UCC could take them over, I don't think UNCC. the people... Sorry? Mm. UNCC, Uganda UNCC, National Council yes, Center. UNCC. Well, uh, that made a few people in the government, their hearts skip when I said UCC. I'm sorry. UNCC. So yeah. if you have the UNCC running these awards, again, remember, this is coming from Operation Wealth Creation. I don't mm -hmm. think the other people in the other office will be happy with the way things are going. It's, it's all about where the money. They, where should they come from, Operation Wealth Creation? That's our question money but you see the thing is this you guys haven't been listening i castigated uncc for going to salim Saleh, you know doing that whole pilgrimage to also do their lobbying for resources during the pandemic when uncc was set up by an act of parliament in 1959 because it was parliament in the beginning that was appropriating covid money so to speak so uncc should have gone to parliament instead of going um, instead of going 
sorry instead of going <laughs> No, you're affecting my train of thought. Instead of going to, 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 to Salim Saleh. <laughs> no, it's not Salim Saleh calling. Ah. So that I, from the very beginning, I mentioned that I uh, spoke, uh, you know, against uh, the authenticity. You know, they had the awards had a very big credibility problem, by the way, so to speak. Everything from, uh, and I think uh, Sewa Sewa had uh, uh, consented to using his brand, you know, and, and even Janzi Band winning itself. Brenda Nanyonjo also won an award. She was heavily invested in the organization, you know, so to speak. So the awards had a very big authenticity uh, uh, problem. You know, I agree entirely that maybe this money should have been invested in an existing award show, like High People, so to speak. We have other awards, like the Royal Gospel Music Awards, took place over the weekend as well. We've had Vine Awards. Yes, probably. Um, uh, the resources should have been invested in that. But the bigger picture is this, and I agree with what Spice Diana was saying. The awards happened at the wrong time, however well-intentioned they were, you know? Mm. And the fact that they were uh, launched at the Independence Monument, knowing well that we'd had uh, a debacle or an issue with the MTV Base Awards, also, you know, speaks a lot, you know, so to speak. So I'm with uh, Spice Diana, I want the economy to open, reopen, the night economy to reopen, so that artists are not given these tokens of you're giving me a, an award that is worth a thousand dollars. Even if you give me the thousand dollars right about now, I don't know if I would have survived in the 21 months of the hard lockdown. So for crying out loud, reopen the economy. The awards could have been held in October 2022 when we're celebrating 60 years. You know of independence as a self-governing nation in, in, fif not in 50 words moses who is on the mm. ground how has the night economy been affected especially the arts night economy let me give you i, I won't even give you a, 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 a an example of the arts i'm going to give you an example of the border border because the border border is the second largest employer in uganda statistically speaking after farming and bettina is a farmer here she may probably appreciate uh, this uh, example but a border border is usually used by two uh, people because there's someone who drives who rides the border border during the day yeah. and then another one that rides a border border in the night you know so that is feeding two families but you're putting a curfew on the border borders they're supposed to stop working at 6 p.m do you know what you are affecting you know in doing that i won't even talk about the artists in that regard so you you you, you do the math and I you think know, the, and I think the ladies who sell the the roadside uh, food. I mean, I think most of, most families really rely on on those roadside snacks that people like me who live in Chireka enjoy a lot. Uh, but if you take those are when people are not buying their food, the whole thing comes down collapsing, right? Uh, but you see, I mean, uh, okay. Go ahead, Becca. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, there's, there are so many things here uh, to, to to wonder uh, about. Um, Mrs. just mentioned about curfew. Do you know that curfew only works in, 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 in the central? Other, uh, other areas, there, central? there's no curfew. Central Kampala? Central region, oh, just okay. central region. Other areas, there's no curfew. So no curfew, uh, uh, no curfew in Guru? No curfew in no, Roto, no curfew in... No curfew in Guru. Oh, um, let's leave that. Uh, that's politics and <laughs> there, there are reasons as to why. But uh, why do musicians have to go to Guru? Why did Saleh... Why not? Who is not, who is not coming from Guru as... Uh, why did he have to go and bench in Guru? It, it's a good... It's, I, I thought that you people wanted to 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 distribute headquarters and 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 and, which and power and there? money which... and things. You've been saying that Kampala so, is crowded, like it's. So which headquarters is there? The uh, that one. What? Which one? That Saleh one. is in Guru as is Saleh, not uh, Operation something. I I I guess is is fit enough to be called an office. No. It is just there as an individual, as an um, as. A reserve force, something, something. He's not there as a member. He's also 
Is Livia, who's in charge of operation, does he also sit in Guru? I I don't know. Yeah, because they want they want to make this musician look silly. They want to make them look completely useless. That's why they go to Guru. They become beggars. They share bedrooms. They share. They do what? That's what they want to to make them look and. For them, they are not realizing that. Okay, let me say something. Uh, to me, whether Saleh is in Gulu or whether he's in uh, um, Kampala, most people will always want to access Saleh. Wherever Saleh is, everyone knows there is money. Mm. So when you want money or you want to tap from government's money, you have to to make sure that you associate with Saleh. And wherever he will be, people will always follow him. You know, no. so whether he's in good, whether he's where, people will follow no. him. I think musicians are no. so. When we no. come back to the jersey, in my small head, I think someone had to do accountability no. before the year closes, so they had to make sure they organize a quick, a quick show that will take all the money to come, to finish the money and get and use all the budget money that was budgeted for for this year. You before close of Bettina, this year. you've been talking about this award being worth one thousand. Where, where, where did you get this? Uh, Moses Selgo said one award, one accolade was it's, for it's one thousand dollars, right? And trust me, one thing I believe Museven or Mucheven or Uncle Museven might not even be aware that the awards took place. All he will receive will be accountability of spending two billion shillings over some organized awards, and they will mention, Oh, we, we are awarded. Uh, uh, my cartoonists, comedians, blah, blah. They won't mention the farmer because they did not. Mm. And if I was in Uganda and they said they awarded farmers, I would tell Uncle Seven that they did not give any money to the farmers because the awards did not have any category of anything that involves the farmers. So they're does using it, artists because they it, know they are. Does he care right? who gets the award or he cares about the, the publicity that comes with it? But yes, what the this is the yeah. worst publicity that they have ever got. Mm. But for them, do they even care? They don't even have the, they don't have, they don't care as long as they got the money. You had what, uh, you're the one who said someone had to leave their honeymoon. With due respect, Cindy, I think she's the chairperson of that UCC, uh, UCU, Moses, how do you call it? So probably she had to be there. Her, her presence meant a lot that she had to, stop from going uh, she had to put her honeymoon on hold to go and attend the awards you know but that was also honeymoon like, why do you, these you guys people say, don't what do you these say? people don't care as long as they eat the rest you get Becca, i want us to be i want us to be objective and fair you covered the I mean, accountability if you ask me they were trying to make to do accountability for 2021. Okay, Bettina, but you were music scheduled at uh, at KFM, and I believe there was a countdown at one time. Um, probably it's still there, but at your time it must have been there. And you picked songs and uh, you know made top number one, top number two, up to maybe top ten. And maybe sometimes some people didn't agree with you. What is, you know, the top number one song or whatever song is getting the most airplay. Um, and coming to you, Abu Baker, you covered the Palm Awards. And like you said in your submission at some point, they were not really exactly free from controversy. <laughs> so how do we make sure I mean, learning from the Palm Awards and now the Jansi, because I'm assuming, or I'm assuming that these awards will come back next year. So if they are coming back next year, where do you see the improvements? One of the best, uh, one of the best things that in, in, in entertainment, in sports, would be controversy. It makes <laughs> the game interesting. But what type of controversy is when you when you're watching soccer and someone is awarded a dubious penalty until uh, the introduction of VAR, we, we could say we could go home crying, but the winners could go home happy. 
Yeah, I just, so, I just while I was starting, sorry for cutting you short, while I was starting the show, I just talked about the Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen situation. Yeah, but in that, that was too, that, that's not my game. I, I listened to you and I said, is this man <laughs> g g getting crazy? What What is he talking about? <laughs> oh. So much statistics. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so the Palm Ward had its own problems, but we had started living with those problems and we could know what the problems are. For example, I'm going to give you one scenario that was uh, so interesting. When when Eddie Away came knowing that he's going to be the winner of the producer of the year, he even brought uh, some Kanyama guys to lift him up to the stage. And so uh, at backstage, just, just one word changed everything. Mm. When... when um, that there's a boy who used to be in um, Firebase who said, but Eddie Away is not a producer. He just owns oh, ja, ja, a na, studio. Na. He just owns, he owns a studio. The producer is uh, Tony, Tony Hose. Yeah, and the award had to change there and then. Just just two minutes to the announcement. Yeah. So such things happened. But with the Palm Awards, when you look at the Palm Awards, the way the music industry was running at a very terrible speed. People were composing songs, people were competitive. But with the Janzi, where I want uh, to award everyone, when, where I want to amuse everyone that is, is for you, that, that cannot bring competition. I'm only Mo happy that my Moses. friend Eddie Gabate won. My my best friend Edgar Wate won an award. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I would, I, 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 I'm calling all that trash. Really? So where where, where, where are your principles? Really? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just happy like for that. a friend. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that everything is 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 okay at all. But a friend of mine was I saw him smiling, and when I say friend smiling, I also smile. But, but of course everything. it was obvious. Eddie Gabate had to win. Standing. But I mean, somehow he's my friend. I don't even know how to congratulate him if I don't believe in the awards themselves. How do you start congratulating someone when you don't believe in what they want? I mean, bless him. He deserved an award, but he deserved better than Janzi. Oh, okay. Well, Moses. You know, yes. Yes, Ralph. As we wind up, what in your opinion, what killed the Palm Awards? Maybe that might help the Jansi people to go back and reflect and say, you know what, we need to do better. Do I really know? I'm not so sure. There's mm. allegations, everything from uh, sponsors' money was misappropriated. There's uh, allegations that uh, Gordon, Wavam, Gordon Wavamuno uh, fell out. I hope I can be heard. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I yeah. think he even sued them. Gordon Wabamuno fell out with some of uh, his the, the, the partners. You know, there's everything to do with, uh, I don't know, controversy. But you see, you guys are in the States. You know about the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. You know about yeah. what, what is happening with the Golden Globes. You know that, uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise returned his three Golden Glo uh, Globes. I mean, Questions about diversity, racism. I mean, there are not enough people of color on on the panel, that sort of thing. Mm. But the Golden Globes are going ahead next year, and they're going to celebrate film despite all this controversy. Let me Moses, finish. Let, 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 let Moses me. finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So I want us to see the forest for the trees here. You know, the Jazzy Awards have actually, to their credit, they brought attention to certain people. People like Esther Namungoji, you know, uh, who, who won the award for best columnist, whether she deserved it or not, I want to go and look for her work. The podcasters, that is the new technology we have right about now. The animators, you know, people like Jimmy Spire, uh, St. Ongo, mm. the, the, the Katikiro's book, you know, because what are the other uh, 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 awards doing, so to speak, you get? I entirely agree, maybe this award should have gone into the already established awards, but remember these awards were not just about music. They were bloated, yes, which is another problem with them. I mean, how do you hand out a hundred categories over two days? The whole thing just looked, I don't know, M-E-H, May, you know? But I want us to see the forest for the trees and I've emphasized the awards 
came at a wrong time. You can't be spending a thousand dollars on something that I can't leverage for a loan while my sector is closed. Open up the sector, the awards should have happened in 2022. The worthy celebration would have been when we turned 60 in on October 9th in 2022. Th thank That's you. Very, when the award should have happened. Thank you very much, Moses. Um last word, Bettina. Last word for me, uh, like Moses said, the awards probably meant well, uh, but for me, they failed to answer. They did not do their research. They failed to mm -hmm. answer the six W's, the who, what, when, where, why, and where, where, in which way to award people. And so getting Kororo ground as a main ground, uh, having wealth creation, being part of the awards, when the farmers are not being helped, it breaks my heart. Farmers don't need awards. Farmers need support. You claim you want to 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 improve to improve their household income by giving by supplying them by distributing inputs to farmers. But then we mm -hmm. see you uh, waving with arts and and you know and partying and dancing. What do you expect of us to say, farmers? We call you hypocrite. Thank That's what I can you. say. Thank you, Bettina. Ali Haji Abubeka. My question is. Mm. I want I want to ask Moses. Um, I, I didn't I didn't follow we, the we are, awards. We're we out of Matt. time. I don't think Moses will be able to answer your question. Yeah, just just a few. Um, I was I was looking I was looking at the categories here. I saw my friend William Kavya won. Uh, mm -hmm. How uh, which song did William Kavya sing this year that made him win the award? I saw Jack Chizito. I don't come. I I see so many things that uh, people people didn't do anything live band where was the live band playing from that they had uh, the chance to judge them that this live band is the best this year moses uh i know you're on ground and, and i see you looking like this of such a konango but yes be as the moses i know and because you're on ground you can tell these people what they should do they might mm -hmm. listen to you first before they listen to me Mm -hmm. advise them and um, next time when they're doing some things let them do it for the people not awarding their own people that uh, are for them they, if um, if you don't support them you're nothing you yeah, even if you're not, not, no, I, 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 I'm not really going to preach, fire, preach to you the fire. Go to fire. thank you thank you uh, thank you very much they've, they've, they've taken that to heart but i think the bigger picture here is the fact that there's probably an acknowledgement that the creative economy is important it contributes up to three percent of global gdp so you look at three percent of uganda's economy the prospects of uh ura taxing uh, you know this uh the, the, these incomes and everything and maybe let's look at it in that uh, in that bigger picture but ultimately the night economy has to open and you know that, that's 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 Moses the only says, oh, yeah, that's thank, right. you. Thank, thank you guys. thank you bettina thank you moses thank you abeka and thank mm. you, our viewers over there. Thank you for watching Roughly Speaking. We'll be back next week. Stay right here on AITV. You are watching AITV. AITV, connecting the diaspora.